Hello everybody, welcome back to another video on the channel. Welcome back again, of course, everybody watching this. We move, we're switching codes on this on this video today. We're going from the jumps, which are now drawing to a close, although we do have the Scottish Grand National coming up at the weekend, and I'll be talking a bit more about that towards the end of the week. But um, I'll, I'll actually be doing my preview for the weekend, which will probably come out Friday for all the uh, weekend's racing. We've got some very good races coming up at the weekend, but I don't want to talk about it too much today. And we're going to try and move along into the main subject, of, which is of today's topic of today's video, which is, of course, about, as you can tell by the thumbnail and probably by the title today, John Gostin's three-year-old Colt, who's as short as 10 to 11 for the 2000 guineas this season, too darn hot. Fantastic two-year-old last year. I was there last year when he won the Dewhurst, and I was absolutely impressed with how he won that race. Coming down into the dip, does a split second in that Dewhurst, where advertised who I back that day to try and take on too darn hot. I mean, it obviously didn't work, obviously, but... Too darn hot coming into the dip. There's a split second where Frankie just had to push him a little bit, and you just a little split second when you you, hot, you thought, is he going to pick up here? But then obviously once he met the rising ground, the pedal went to the max into overdrive. He turned it into a procession and won quite comfortably in the end. Very very impressive. The turn of foot that horse showed that day was was really good. And to show that over course and distance at Newmarket, well not exactly course and distance, but to handle that dip and come out of it well, to handle the track well at Newmarket, the the rolling mile was a big big positive for the horse. And I think he's got. I think I think he'll win the two thousand guineas. I'd be very surprised if he gets beat. I'm a big fan of the horse. I'm at, at ten to eleven at the moment. I would I would not be touching it at such a short price. I'd probably try and back something each way to try and get a place maybe. And I'd be probably looking at Magna Grezia each way. Again, he ran in New, at Newmarket on, on the same day, and I backed him. He came second to behind. I think it was Persian King beat him. The French horse for Andre Farb who. He's not going to run in the Guineas, was entered for the Guineas and was taken quotes after winning in, in, at Newmarket in September. But um, he won't be running there. Magna Gretzky is currently 11-1 to 1 for the 2000 Guineas. And I think out of all the O'Brien horses there, you've got 10 Sovereigns in there, who to me might be a bit more of a sprint, sprinter maybe. He's a bit quirky, his 10 Sovereigns. He's a very classy horse, but a little bit quirky for me. He's 7-1, to 1, but Magna Gretzky, I think, I think for me, out of all the possible O'Brien horses that might run there, he looks the most solid pick, 11-1, to 1, to perhaps cause an upset. I'm not saying it's going to happen, in my opinion. I don't think it will, but I think he's probably the most, the biggest threat out of the O'Brien contingent, whatever he runs. And going back to too, too darn hot, I think, well, obviously he reappears on Saturday in the Greenham. That's a race that John Gosden hasn't had the best of records in. He hasn't won the race. Obviously, Kingman, he had, he ran Kingman in the Greenham. I think in 2014 or 2015 it was, and uh, he got turned over before getting beaten in the Guineas as well. So it's not a race that uh, I'd be, you know, if you're John Gosden fans, you wouldn't be really putting your hard-earned money on two Don Hot. He's too short really to be back to tours, isn't he, really, for Saturday. He should win Saturday, and uh, I'll talk touch a little bit further on that as on Friday when we preview the race itself and go through it in a little bit more detail. But I'm really today going to talk about the 2000 Guineas market and two Don Hot. What we can expect from him this season. And I think, really, he's going to be a very good horse, provided he trains on from two to three. If you look at um, some progressive two-year-olds who didn't really train on to three-year-olds, and I was watching the um, Racing Post, um, Anti-Post Markets for the podcast this morning, I was listening to it, in fact, and they made a very, very good point about the horse Air, Air Force, I think it was Air Force Blue, I think it was, Aidan O'Brien trained it a couple of years ago now. And that was a two-year-old that was really expected to go on to big, big things uh, as a three-year-old. I think it ran the guineas, it got beaten the guineas, and it just had an absolute terrible three-year-old campaign, which culminated in it running in the July Cup in July, trying to go down the sprinting route with it. It never worked, and the horse has drifted off the face of the earth. I don't know where it is now, but I think it's obviously retired. But there's an example there. Some of these horses don't always train on from two to three, but I don't think Too Darn Hot is one of them. I think he's a fantastic progressive horse. Hopefully he's wintered well, and he should really go into this green on Saturday. He, really win it. he should win it quite comfortably, I think. I don't think any horse in the market there should get near him on Saturday in the Greenham, and that should be a nice set-up prep run to try and take him forward and set him up nicely for, for the big one, the Guineas. Whether or not he'll go to the Derby after that, I'm not too sure if he would. There's breeding in, his, in, there's the, in the breeding, I suggest that he might stay on the Derby trip. I think we're hearing about it today on the Racing Post podcast, I think the, the breeding side of things, where his, his sire or his dam, I think it was, is bred for the Marlon, to, you know, for the, for the Derby trip, but... Um, it all depends on how he comes out of the guineas, really, of course. But I think, really, look at, looking for a potential horse who could be a derby horse. For me, I think Mad Moon could be a definite derby horse. 16-1 to 1 for, the two, for the 2,000 guineas over here. He got beat on sun, on Saturday, I think it was, in the guineas trial in Ireland. And uh, to me, I, I'm not too sure if he's going to run in the guineas now. 
I'd get the impression they might stick and go to, go for the Irish guineas at the cover. The stiff mile might possibly be better for him. And he he has been my anti-post pick for the 2,000 guineas, but I haven't put any money in him just of yet because I'm just trying to wait and see if he'll go to Newmarket or if he'll stay domestic and go to the Curra. But I think he's definitely got a great chance of being a good Derby horse to mile. The, the trip for the Derby should suit him, really. And if he can run a, if he can do a Massa, what Massa did last year, maybe run a good, a, a decent race in the Guineas, then go on to try and uh, win the Derby at a big price, step up in trip and win the Derby. I think he's got the right profile for that. If M Mad Moon can finish third or fourth in the Guineas, have a solid run, go back and can then try and prepare for the Derby in June, I think he's got a great, great chance. He's currently 16 to one for the Derby as well, in behind horses such as Japan, who I think's got a great big chance at eight to one as well. So it's obviously going to be a tight, tight contested race is the Guineas. But if you're looking for horses who might be able to go on to other things maybe throughout the course of the season, I definitely think Mad Moon's a horse who you all keep an eye out for as a potential derby horse. I think he's going to, I think he'd really definitely suit that derby trip. And looking at other horses in this in this 2000 Guineas market, I think Calix, I don't think um, he's going to run. I was asked Scott when he won the Coventry, I think it was, and won that very nicely, but... Uh, only had a debut a few weeks before that, so I think it, they said it was quite rushed to try and get him to, to Royal Ascot, but uh, he won that quite well, and I don't think he's going to come here. I don't, I don't think John Gosden's got any intention of getting... You might be able to get a prep run into him, I don't think it's what John Gosden said, and I'd be very surprised if John Gosden just went straight to the guineas off the back of no run. John Gosden doesn't normally do that. He likes to get a prep run into his classic hopefuls usually, and I'd be surprised if he does. I think 12-1 to 1 there. I wouldn't take any 12-1s to 1s on that, and I think he might... Uh, might, might duck the guineas and maybe go for a few other things in the, throughout the course of the season. Um, looking down the market, again, I talk about Advertise Martin Meatles, 14 to 1. I um, saw a lot of the backside of Two Darn Hot last year, didn't he? Uh, I backed him last year when he finished second in behind Two Darn Hot, in the, just trying to, trying to take on the favourite. And he ran a good race, finished second in behind, didn't run too badly at all. Had Two Darn Hot in a split second, little bit of trouble, nothing too major, just only a brief second coming into the dip. But then Two Darn Hot brushed him aside quite easily. And I think at fourteen to one, it's a good price. Whether or not, I don't know when we're going to see him next, and in, 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 whether we're going to see his seasonal reappearance yet. I'm not too sure. The Cravens in a few weeks' time, so you might see one or two of these. Maybe try and go for that, maybe, and uh, that could be another eye opener. But I think Saturday for Dude on Hot will be a good, good prep run for him. Should win the Greenham, as I said. Should win it quite comfortably as well. I think he's he's very, very short for the for the Greenham on Saturday, and they're very, very confident that he'll go and get the job done there. Give him a simple, straightforward race and that, that should set him up nicely but uh, I think this horse is going to go on to big things this season I think he'll win the guineas I think he's just head and shoulders above everything else if he's trained on from 2-3 to three, as they think they, he has then he'll beat these doing handstands I think he's a very very good horse and I'll just look at the horses in and around him he's obviously beaten advertised before 10 sovereigns I said before I don't know if he'll stay a mile that's just uh, a big big uh, big ask Zakuski at 15-2 to two is a horse that I'm interested in following this season I think he's got a very very good future ahead of him and he could be a big threat in this race, but again, we'll have to keep an eye on him, see if he goes for any trials in, in pre preparation for this race here. I think, as I said, I mentioned Magna Grezia would be a big, big player each way. I think if you were back in each way, which I, I don't, I wouldn't personally, but I think if you're back in each way, then he'd be, as I said before, as I mentioned at the top of the video, he'd be the solid pick for um, you know, Aidan O'Brien contingent, who are going to play their hand with their Guineas and Derby hopefuls in and around the start of May. You're going to see the O'Brien horses slowly come out to play. And um, you might see one or two reappear soon. I think Ando Bronze will send one to, um, I think, Chelmsford at the weekend or Chelmsford City. He's going to send one there in the hope of winning the race. I think it's a, a qualifier for the Kentucky Derby. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's SSS Mitchell, I think his name is something like that. He's running that there on Saturday in the hope of trying to get that to the Kentucky Derby. Obviously, he did that with Mendelssohn last year after he won the UAE Derby in Maidan, didn't he? And... Uh, I know Brian, I was reading on the racing post this morning in an interview, he said that he learnt a lot from that preparation with Mendelssohn, the whole idea of running him in America. It was quite brutal, he said. And I remember that Mendelssohn's first race in the uh, Kentucky Derby, I think it was on absolute sloppy ground, wasn't it? It was like the the, the, the the artificial surface out in America, when it gets rained on, it turns into that sort of thick slop, doesn't it? And uh, they might learn from that. But I think Andrew Brian, I know Brian, sorry, for his classic hopefuls, you won't see them probably till around the start of May. Or maybe even late April, really. I don't think he might just he might give one or two a, a, a prep run, but uh, he might not with some of the other ones. But uh, going back to the topic again, just to round off this video, for me, too darn hot will win the guineas. I'll be surprised. I'll, I'll be shocked if he was to get beat at the weekend. I think it's, uh, he's a very good horse, progressive horse, the best horse in this, in, best horse in the guineas market at the moment. Again, we haven't seen what the others are going to pose yet, but uh, 
He's beaten a few of them, as I said before, and I think he's by far the best horse in the race, and I think he'll win the Guineas, and uh, he might go on to the Derby, maybe. But if you did enjoy this guy, everybody, hit the thumbs up. Comment your opinions as well. I'd like to hear what everyone else thinks about it as well. Uh, yeah, that'd be good as well, and we'll uh, see you all probably Friday, actually, for um, the weekend preview. Building up to Scottish Grand National, and also the Newbury card featuring the Greenham, and also the Fred Darling Stakes, which is a good trial for the uh, Phillies and for the aspiring Phillies looking to try and put their mark on the 1000 Guineas market. So we'll all see you then. Take care, guys, and we'll see you soon. Bye bye.